morning, ladies. It's wonderful to have you here again this morning. And uh, we have a very special guest, somebody that I've known for quite a long time, uh, Yahav Ron of Paris 99. And um, it's, yes, he's just, um, he's going to be sharing with us his passion for fashion and his uh, business concept and how he got started and also showing us some of the things that you can actually buy at a fraction of the price, uh, beautiful high-end things that normally we would consider that would be out of our reach. But anyway, I'm going to hand over to you, Yaha. Okay, take um, it away. Great, so I was thinking about it this morning and it is it has actually been exactly 10 years since I started. Um, Nine and a half years officially, Ten, the first six months, you know, when you start doing something and you trepid with trepidation kind of going, is this going to work? Is this the thing? And then suddenly here it was. Um, so I began my fashion journey uh, when I was very young. And then I studied fashion design uh, at RMIT, an institution in Melbourne. And as part of my... Um, education I did an exchange to Amsterdam, which uh, really allowed me to start to interact with the, the European fashion industry, you know, face to face as it were. And after I finished my uh, graduation, I uh, went and spent a year living and interning with a label in Antwerp in Belgium, which was incredible, an incredible experience. There was, you know, we they showed at Paris Fashion Week. So I did two collections with them. I met a lot of fabulous, interesting people connected to the industry, obviously, you know, deeply and also from a kind of peripheral fashion loving uh, perspective. And little did I know that these people would, um, these lovely, wonderful friends would be the kind of beginning of my um, ability to source amazing, beautiful, uh, unusual, uh, interesting, and luxurious pieces for my salon, by appointment only salon, Paris 99, um, which, as I just said, functions by appointment only, a highest end designer resale. And um, it's basically a bit of a fantasy where you, we make an appointment. Generally, it's all word of mouth. It is uh, Melbourne's best kept fashion secret. Um, it is slightly less secret after 10 years, as you might imagine. Because I'm uh, in a, a fabulous apartment uh, setting, it is all about this idea of coming to uh, visit the fashion salon, staying for an unlimited amount of time. Um, and the idea of that is that it really feels like it is your own uh, experience. And it's not about shopping. It's about just the fantasy of fashion and dressing up and um, exploring, uh, you know, exploring in a way that you probably wouldn't do in a retail setting, just by the nature of, of retail. Um, and of course, you know, I prepare uh, gin and tonics and like sometimes I cook depending, you know, what time of the day it is. And it's just a whole um, social experience with in the surrounds of beautiful amazing designer clothes so um obviously i evelyn and i met through word of mouth um and i've been coming to sydney i am coming to sydney next week which is very exciting so that's kind of the the long and short of it i mean is there anything that uh you would like to hear about in more detail Yes, how did the um, Paris 99 name come about? Oh, of course. Well, so when I was uh, 13, it was the year 1999. Then I turned 14. So I was 13, the year was 1999, and I was taken to Paris by my grandparents for, a, for my you know, big birthday gift. Interestingly enough, we also went to London, but it was really Paris that stuck. So therefore, many, many years later, when I was kind of brainstorming what to call the, the salon, it didn't have a name. It was cash only. You know, it was that whole thing. 
and then I was brainstorming with a friend and and you know we thought we sh it doesn't feel right to kind of call it you know designer recycle or second time lucky or all these kind of names that are associated with a designer resale um and some are much better than others obviously some are pretty look i mean you kind of go okay that's a bit on the nose but um <laughs> recycled rags comes to mind something <laughs> like that yeah where you go well that doesn't sound very attractive you know <laughs> so so i wanted to kind of have nothing to do with that and we were talking and he was like well you know what's what's like a an iconic moment or something in your and I was like oh well obviously when I was taken to Paris in 1999 that was the cementing of of the whole thing of my obsession with fashion um I I dabbled with it before in like when I was about you know turning 12 I did a, a junk mail round you know if, I'm sure everyone's familiar with junk mail um and the teenagers that stick it in your box even though it says no junk mail please um I never I never did that um, but yeah, so, so I, that's when I first kind of saw, uh, fashion magazines because, you know, we went to the news agency back when news agencies had lots of fashion magazines, unlike today. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is cool. Vogue looks fun. And I bought a Vogue, I bought a Harper's Bazaar, but then in Paris in 1999 on the Avenue Montaigne with my grandparents wanting to go to you know, this church and that museum, I was like, no, we are going to look at Louis Vuitton and Dolce and & Gabbana and Mani and Lacroix and whatever. So Paris 99 comes from that. And usually I don't say that until you're in the salon because it's a mystery. <laughs> but now you know. Uh, and you, it might be, you might be able to answer it. Do you have any famous people that we might know that come to you? Or is that something that's a bit... That is, a, that is an... Well, Evelyn, thank you. You've set it up quite well because you kind of know the answer. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I mean, yes, absolutely. But I will never share uh, who comes here because it's very much, you know, part of the, the allure of being appointment only and one-on-one -on -one and private is that there, I am very discreet about, mm -hmm. about who comes here because they may not want people to know that um, it's nice when people do because then we kind of share uh, in the goodness that is um, high-end designer resale because, you know, we, it's getting much, much better. But I guess even when I started, there was still a little bit of a people are like oh second hand which feels like a really kind of old-fashioned thing to to think especially in the you know the time of um sustainability and and uh green the i mean it's not even a movement it's you know yeah. obviously you know where i stand on climate change with this opinion but um i mean look i will tell you that i have also um relationships with a lot of costume designers so pieces from paris 99 have been featured on television in some of your favourite shows. <laughs> so that's good. I do understand, you know, the, the confidentiality that's really necessary when people come in. I, I got the same thing when I had my recycled shop, which again was very high end in Double Bay, which is a fashion yeah. suburb of Sydney. And a lot of people, you know, would ask me, do you have a back door? Well, we didn't have a back door. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'd either have to come in early in the morning or stay later in the afternoon because they did not want to be sort of with the mainstream walking in and out of the store. But um, yeah, my store, and you're right about the name Paris 99 has a ring to it. And the and my store, which is still running today, was called Le Deuxième Fois, which means the second time around. Well Yes, but see the interest. The good thing about yours is it was in a different language, so and it just right. sounded <laughs> or like you know, exotic immediately. Yeah, um, right. yes, totally. You know, but but in in the same what I just thought about. You know, the what I am trying to do is to dispel this myth of the the um, you know hoity toitiness of of mm -hmm. fashion. It doesn't have to be that. Like mm -hmm. we're not we no. No one is truly like, you know, that scene in Pretty Woman. I'll remember, you know, mm -hmm. where she is 
mistreated at the boutique and then she comes back after he's given her all the money and whatever. Um, it's not about that here. The the idea of the the um, private appointment is that you the the people that the visitors just feel really comfortable. It's about making somebody feel as comfortable as possible. And if you're you know by yourself or with a trusted friend, then I find that it is you know we don't need to kind of the ice is kind of broken quite quickly. Yeah. And I think that that's really important because as we all know, it's all about um, connection. When people come, I can, I can just say this right now, it's very welcoming. It's like, you know, there's no none of the, oh, you know, you're in a particular boutique. It's just it's so friendly and you, and you build rapport very quickly with people. I mean, I'll have to have to say that. And I was introduced <laughs> to you with by Helen Robinette, which a lot of you will know, Helen. And um, I just felt of so course. comfortable with you immediately, you know. And, you know, so I was just thinking, it's really about grown up dress ups when you go to your salon. It's, it's really fantastic. Correct. And, and Correct. Exactly that. that. I'd be sort of came to have a look at some of the things that you, you know, would love to show us as well. It's so, uh, oh, of course, of course. Well, I have I have done a little selection just to you know I pre prepared, but it's really interesting. Before I start to show you, um, part of like, kind of breaking down this uh, convention of 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 fashion and shopping and whatever is that people come and sometimes initially they're a bit. Uh, uh, um, yeah, there's a bit of trepidation about touching things mm. and they go, oh, do I have to put it back in the place that I got it? And I'm and I like the answer is no, there is no right place with the salon. There's only one of anything. There's no different sizes. There's no order that I put it in specially. Mm. It's literally just liter like a free for all um, dress ups. The more things that people try on, the better. And the more things people try on, the more they keep trying on as you get more and more comfortable. And then the best success is when we have, you know, I don't know, someone's tried on 40 things and they're all over the couch and they're, you know, with <laughs> piles. That's, that's, me when, that's me when I come, Yaha. A million, exactly. things, a million things everywhere. But I was going to say, that's, I think, the beauty of your salon is that it is so welcoming that people try things on they would never have thought that they would try on. Exactly. You know, they're feeling fabric and they actually get um, where they might have been scared of something that was very high-end designer. All of a sudden, it's just a piece of clothing and it fits them and they love it. And, you know, and, and then when you sit back and you say to them, well, the price of um, that jacket would be the same price as if you went to Maya and bought one, except that you're buying a vintage designer piece. It's, yeah, amazing. So that's all Exactly. I'm See, we didn't even start to talk about prices, um, Suzanne. And that's, that is the other thing, is that I, of immediately they're in the, um, uh, you know, layered buildup of high-end fashion. There is the expectation, as, you, as Evelyn said at the beginning, that, you know, we can, that it's out of our reach. But in this circumstance, it really doesn't have to be. And yes, you can get something that, um, you know, let's say, let's use the mid mid market as the as the reference point. So let's say you go to a mid market uh, store and say the jacket is made out of a, a, a viscose polyester with a, an acetate lining or a polyester lining. If you're generally that's how it goes. There are you know, there's a full size range and another 10 out the back. And it costs, I don't know, let's say $380 or something like that. Let's even say $280. So that's pretty, you know, standard for that kind of thing. It's made in China or Bangladesh or wherever. Here, as you said, you're trying on, your, you're engaging with things that are, um, I'm just gonna look over this way so I can just drop some names. So on just one rack I'm looking at, you've got um, Christian Lacroix, Calvin Klein Collection, Givenchy by Alexander McQueen, Emmanuel Ungaro, Bill Blass, Gianni Versace, Oscar de la Renta, Issey Miyake, 
and Hussein Shalayat for those that like something a bit more avant-garde. So that's the kind of level we're dealing with. However, say the Christian Lacroix jacket that I'm looking at right now is I've got it priced at $440. So if you think about it, it's, it's a bit of a step up, but what you get for that step up is like infinitely just better. You know, it's for not to be judgmental, like it is better fabric, it's better cut, you know, the, the fit, the feeling, um, the fact that there's, you can't get another 10, like not the next 10 people are going to be able to buy one. And you go, that initially would have been like over $2,000. So you go, what is there to lose? <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> I just have a quick question because I, yeah. um, I know these gals all know you and know what you do. And I'm from California. And I Hello. was just wondering, <laughs> hi, I'm Linda. Um, how do you curate the clothes? Are you redesigning them or are you curating them from different places and then you have them all in your salon? Yes. These are all- Okay, so that is a, that's a good question. And I kind of skipped over that a little bit at the beginning. Um, so everyone that I met in Europe, they are women who devour high-end fashion in all its mm -hmm. forms, whether they get it new or they are buying it secondhand, whatnot. After they have worn it once or twice, mm -hmm. they don't need it anymore. So I purchase it from them. They pack it up, send it to me in a box or a satchel mm -hmm. or whatever. And I get very excited when I open up the package and pull out the piece and go, oh my God, it's even better than I expected. So that is, so those are the pieces that come off the, the come out of the pack. I put them on a hanger and I hang them up. Obviously I dry clean everything and it's all legitimate. So just, you know, in case right. that was not clear. Now, if something comes and it is not, I'm not a hundred percent pleased, then I kind of take a bit of a breath. I go, okay, it doesn't matter. It's not as good or it's got some issues. Then as a designer, I'm like, wow, look at this incredible wool that has just fallen into my hands. Right. So then I will, I will cut things up and reassemble mm -hmm. them, you know, cut around the stain or the hole or the whatever. Although sometimes I like to keep the hole. It just depends on the feeling um, that I mm -hmm. have from, from the piece. So those pieces that become something else, I call them Yahavron reconstructions. It's upcycling. It, it right. becomes Yahavron reconstruction. Then... Because I'm a designer, and I'll just quickly flick over. It's very messy, as you can see. This is my, this is just my work table. There's some fabric on the floor, and there's a lot more fabric over here, and over here. So, just you know, it's a very busy space, and there's a lot going on, and it's very creative. Um, and things that emerge from those fabrics. Uh, Yahavron originals. So that's actually kind of the breakdown of it. You've got the Paris 99 designer pieces, which are untouched, you know, they are as they are. And then you've got my original and, and in that the reconstruction work from pieces that haven't um, worked. Like for example, so this for example, is a Yahavron original. It is made from a um, fatigue khaki uh, printed cotton that I've just cut randomly out and then uh, attached to it is just this like silk tartan essentially. Now I'll take it off so that's just there's only one of these and it's fabulous and, and unusual and interesting with the open sleeve and so on but if you see under here see this skirt so this is actually the part of the lining of a dress that had arrived by the, the designer Richard Tyler. Now the dress had been altered and I don't like to sell things that have been altered because then they're not like a hundred percent. So what I did was I, deta I started detaching um, all the different components of the dress. And I found that in that within the lining which was like satin, underneath the lining was this stunning chiffon that then had these beautiful lace 
in broad, I mean, yeah, just lace, lace kind of, I guess, appliqued onto it. So I was like, wow, that's just so incredible. What a lovely um, thing to to have hidden in, in a, an already amazing piece. And so I basically added a, a bit of um, herringbone tape, which is kind of a signature of my work. And it's become like this kind of lingerie, slippy skirt, which at this particular point is on my male mannequin, because why not? So that was quite a long-winded answer to your question. Does that, <laughs> is that satisfactory? Was, I loved it. I, I thank you. That was, that was great. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, that's the skirt I tried on the other day when I was in there, over the top of another skirt, and it looked amazing, remember? You did. Indeed, you did. That's right. So and, what is it doing still in uh, your hub salon? <laughs> well, there were too much other choice, Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't you dare show them the one that I'm still thinking about. Oh, okay. I won't. I won't. I won't. Very good. Now, oh, let me show you some other things. Um, oops. Here is a beautiful Alexander McQueen. I just don't know whether the... Okay, so now I see it's picked up the detail. So you can probably see it's actually um, gathered chiffon. Mm -hmm. So basically horizontal, uh, like gathered pleats that go all around the jacket and through the sleeve, obviously. And then it is a collarless little, and it's got the leather trim. And then it just obviously snaps together. Now it doesn't, I mean, I could, let me see if I can. So this is where the technology kind of, we go a bit lo-fi because I, it's not a professional studio. So oh, actually this outfit is quite fun. So the skirt at the bottom is a long vase and it's actually made from a kind of double, um, it's, I don't know exactly the technique, but it makes it feel like a rose petal. It's got this real kind of almost watery mm. um, plushness to it. And then like Albert Buzz's work was, you know, he did a lot of external seams and external darts. And when you put this on, because there's no, there's, there's no vent, it's one of those skirts that you have to, your gait is um, affected. And so it's very beautiful. And in fact, the, the, this is the production version. The show version had these very, like, extra, extra kind of hips. So it looked like the, the tulip was even more um, pronounced. But as you know, there's often a difference between show versions and production versions because <laughs> that perhaps they thought that people would not, you know, readily buy the extra hips because maybe they don't want extra hips. <laughs> and so but do you example, alter pieces? I, I just was curious if, if you get a client in there that doesn't quite fit into something, do you tailor it for them? Okay, so I do not do it myself, no. Okay. But it is a possibility. But I do have also a philosophy that says, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. There'll always be something else that doesn't need an alteration. However, you've probably heard this before, the, we, we call it like a minor, minor things versus major surgery. So major surgery, there's no point in doing because then you just change the piece. Minor things, I guess, if the sleeve needs to come up, if the hem, you want to shorten the hem by, you know, a few centimeters, um, if you want to take something down, you know, if the button, if, you know, like little things. Yes, then I'm okay with that. And I have people that I will, you know, recommend you to, or a lot of people have their own, um, you know, trusted uh, alterationist tailor sure. already. Sure. So, mm. but because, you know, getting back to the, if it works, it works, if it doesn't, doesn't, there's just so many clothes in the world that if it's not, like if we didn't find it here today, then it's not the end of the world. We will definitely find it again. In fact, I had someone yesterday, now she doesn't know this, but her husband is going to buy it for Christmas, but she kind of talked herself out of it, even though she actually shouldn't have. 
But because of the pandemic, you know, people are working from home. Uh, people aren't wearing, say, blazers as much because we don't need to, you know, we're not in the office or whatever. Um, now, this piece was actually made of like a, in fact, let me show it to you. It's here. It's, a, it's Donna Karen, Donna Karen collection. And it's actually like a bonded jersey and neoprene. So it is really soft. It has its own kind of body. And it's really quite, I mean, I hate this phrase, but it's literally the epitome of luxe casual. Mm. Mm. So she's going to get it as a surprise, which is very nice. Um, but basically, that was like the first time that she came that she didn't find something outright. And this particular woman is quite particular already. So, you know, whereas someone, uh, I mean, another time she came in, we had to choose between seven things. So you just never know. That's part of the beauty um, of the unknown of designer resale is that you're let's say if you are a if you're you're an image consultant and i encourage image consultants as evelyn and suzanne and and uh everyone that's will hopefully watch this call knows i'm very very much encouraging of, of you to bring your clients and there's a little uncertainty because obviously you want you want the kind of maximum return so that obviously the client is um satisfied with with the service that that you were that you provided and i get that so in a way the uncertainty of not knowing whether we will find something can be a little kind of daunting because you don't want to feel like anybody's time was wasted but i 100 percent say that as long as we've had a good time and and we always do because you know you don't go to a you go to the shopping center and you can go to four different stores and you can have a coffee at the food court or at a little cafe or something, but it's just not the same. Like the experience is just different. And, mm -hmm. and when somebody wades in for the first time, it is a little, it's very different. There's no doubt about it. Generally you don't make a, it's an haute couture thing to make an appointment, you know, to, to go clothes shopping or you're doing it because you're, you're buying a wedding dress and it's this whole kind of ritual nature of it but what i am trying to do is as i keep saying is kind of dispel all that about this kind of fashion is that it can just be yeah yeah a completely approachable yeah, Hub, that's yeah. A lovely thing when i take clients to your salon um i'm always telling them look you know if it works great but you it's it's like a lucky dip you don't don't expect to you know, have in mind, I need a suit or I need a, a cocktail dress. It's It may yeah. not happen, but come for the fun anyway, because, and you never know that surprise will make your experience even sort of, you know, off the planet. It'll be just fantastic. Mm. It's exactly that. It is, a, it, it is the, um, uh, it's a kind of a letting go of a bit of, of control of going, I need this, I need this, I need this. Because generally, if you say, I need this, I need this, I need this, I think probably maybe 80% of the time, I will, it just won't be there because you've got it in your head and you know exactly what it looks like. And often it's not there, even in other places, unless you've seen it in a catalog. But the, as you said, the, that feeling, and as Suzanne said, you know, of trying on something that you just never thought you would, and having it be the most wonderful result is just that that oomph that is often so missing from from the, the shopping experience. It's completely, um, it, you know, it gives you the, that rush, that endorphin rush, where you just feel really good. Now look at this this John Galliano wonder. It's like mm -hmm. hand. It, it obviously is not done by hand, but it looks like it's just like a hand scrawled floral print with all these little details that you see, these um, the shell buttons and this little zipper that's actually attached to like a little uh, a strip, almost like a um, like you'd seen kind of diving or, or skydiving idea. And then just the beautiful top stitching details, this little pocket with the Velcro on the sleeve, you can hear that, just to put your I'm not sure what you put there, like pencils or something. <laughs> Little elbow patch. 
So it's almost kind of a military vibe, except in this completely unmilitary floral print. And this one, interestingly enough, was is still new. It was bought from someone who must, she must have bought it in a shop, like a multi-label shop, because the price on it is 1,933 euros. And it is no longer that. It is 500 Australian dollars, which is very, very reasonable, I think, anyway. <laughs> too, as image consultants, is we've got to not have the expectation that when we take people shopping, they have to buy something because they're getting their value anyway because we're teaching them. As we're trying things on, exactly. and they're putting things on why this works, why we're suggesting they put this on, why we don't think that that's a great purchase for them so they, it's not as if they're not getting anything for their money anyway they are now this yeah. that's a you probably can't see this um because of the lighting but this is actually a Givenchy by Alexander McQueen skirt from the late 90s when when Alexander McQueen was the uh, creative director of Givenchy and I'll try and get close so the the weave it's a jacquard oh. and it's actually beautiful like um, leaves and and uh, I mean it's not flora it's um what do you call it when it's like leaves and twigs and botanical? sticks botanical botanical very yeah very good botanical so it's a botanical um like tone on tone damask uh, uh shiny almost kind of a um it's not a metallic thread but it comes across as quite metallic when the light hits it and in fact when it is dark but there's like a glint of of light a source somewhere it almost looks glow in the dark which is really fabulous so you know i do a lot of research and um there are some things i i guess in the vintage market that um draw a lot of money like people collect them and especially if they're kind of key pieces and of course there's all the the fashion um, uh, auctions these days, you know, at, at major auction houses, um, and not just accessories, like a lot of contemporary and also historical uh, costume, but say, um, I know that there's someone in Wisconsin who would sell a skirt like this for like $3,000 because of its, you know, collector value in a way. Um, now I've got this skirt at 460 Australian dollars, so, you know, and you can come and try it on as well, which is nice. I, I mean, if you go to Wisconsin, you can do that. But I still think $3,000 US is quite a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Something a little bit more summery. You've got this blue marine kind of little folkloric top and skirt set in silk so it's beautiful silk jersey and you should know that i am touching this and it feels like liquid and it's got that beautiful lace um panel as a as a highlight and you can see the lace um sagating essentially through the side seams and so forth and of course that's echoed on the skirt and the skirt is in a print matched um Georgette. So they are the same print, but the fabrication is different. So you have a different, you know, um, drape and handle and, and feeling. But again, with this beautiful trim here that you see along the, like underneath the, the yoke and just, just the details, you know, and this is obviously made in Italy and Blue Marine is, um, Blue Marine, I guess, yeah. So you had Anna Molinari was kind of a, a lower, I maybe diffusion version line of, of Blue Marine and Blue Marine was the upper line. And so this set, the skirt is 360 and the top is 280. So very reasonable, you know, I keep saying that. I keep saying um, when I tell someone the price, the only surprise they should have is that it's lower than what they expected <laughs> or it's what they expected. You know, the idea is that, you know, I want things to go to have beautiful homes and lives and for people, for their wearer to, the owner to get really excited by them. But I also don't want people to go, oh, I will buy it, 
but I won't wear it as much because I feel it's my kind of good piece. And I say, well, if it's your good piece, you should wear it all the time because then it just yeah. feels good all the time. Linda, that, no that outfit has got me all over it. I mean, it, that uh, is, did you see? that's my solar energy right there. Did you, <laughs> did you see my message in the chat? No, did you? Said, oh yeah. There is something about you with these femme pieces. Do you agree? I just saw you. I yes, just... <laughs> yes. And I was trying not to say anything about the blazer. You know, <laughs> but I really like that one too. Then it's very unlucky because the jacket will be too big. Oh. But the top of the top and the skirt would be just right. <laughs> um, oh now hold God. on, because there's more. There's always more. This is a you've got this kind of almost almost matched, but not matched. And they are two different designers. This is a Gianfranco Ferre. You have this beautiful boucle is the is the uh the main body and it's actually double thickness say in the peplum but then the lining is essentially a color matched silk so you almost have like this double jacket with the double zipper so you can obviously have it halfway up or you know all the way up or just fully clothed so i love this um, this kind of um graphically uh structured but also it is not as structured as it looks the structure comes from the thickness of the fabric but i was going to show you another one if we're talking about Ferret. so how gorgeous is this this like slightly metallic come through with the velvet collar mm -hmm. and the velvet covered buttons yeah. and velvet facing gorgeous I mean, we could go on. Just, are there any more questions? Um, just as kind of as a follow up to what Linda was just talking about. Um, and this question is on sizing. So what is the general kind of size range of things that you get in? Yes, that is a good question, Emma. So between a uh, Australian four to an Australian 16 to 18. Now, depending on the piece, so as it is, you know, there's only one of anything and, and so on. For example, say a Jean-Paul Gaultier, that the number on it is French 44, which technically would mean, if you were looking at the sizing ranges, would be like a 12 to 14. Sometimes, depending on the cut of the piece, it will go, it will go, two sizes up or look oversized on someone who doesn't matter if the shoulders are a bit, you know, collapsy and so on. The other rule that I have, so the rule is if it works, it works, it doesn't, it doesn't. The other rule is you must try mm -hmm. things on because that's how you fully know. Like you can make a, a visual um, kind of thought of, ah, oh, this will fit me or I like the, the shape of this or I even know the shape of this. Sometimes what you think something's going to look like doesn't look anything like what you thought. Mm -hmm. So two examples. There was a woman who came on, came in and I held up a Miss Sony dress and she said, mm, I'm not sure. I don't think I like that very much. And I said, give it a try. And she tried it on and she instantly was like, I can't believe I hesitated to try this on I'm absolutely I love it like I'm going to take this dress thank you so much conversely someone came in last week one of the first people that came back after we were allowed to reopen which is really exciting um and she was like I love this dress it's this it was a in fact oh I don't know I think I've put it out put it away but it was like this apple green silk uh, Lutz. Lutz is a, a German designer based in Paris, studied in um, London, but worked in, in Belgium. So there you go. And she was like, I love it. It's this kind of sack shape. You know, it'll be perfect. And in the meantime, I've got her in other different things. And then we, you know, we're like, oh, let's try on that dress that we love so much. We tried it on. It was a complete fail. So you just don't know. And the same thing with the sizes. So obviously I'm quite good at, at kind of working out whether something will fit you and the more i see pieces on different people which is why i encourage people to try stuff on the more i know how that piece works so i can actually 
kind of then somebody comes in, let's say Evelyn, you bring someone new and I, and you already say, oh, she's probably about a size 16 to 18. And I go, okay, well, obviously we will focus on certain things. I did bring some things and I will go, okay, well, I know that this particular piece has quite a wide back and it looks like her back is, you know, perhaps proportionately wide, but that's kind of where she needs the room. And we'll put that on and hopefully it works. And if it doesn't, we move on to something else. No, uh, remember, yeah. Remember that beautiful skirt that I bought? It was a, the most beautiful wool ever. And it had that button and it was a sort of a flared and the waist was just that little bit too small. And yeah. we bought some beautiful thick lace fabric in the cloth shop with Miss Suzanne Deckerbeer. And I've got a whole panel just put in. That was just, I, I'm sure that was um, Yves okay. Saint Laurent, right? It was, but you had done a deconstruct and a reconstruct on it. I think you'd said oh, have I? you had taken the top off and kept the skirt section. Oh, yes, to... that's right. That's right. No, I do remember that. Yeah. See that. So you had someone who you trusted to do that. And you... And now, have you know who did the alteration? Elsie. Oh, well, ah, oh, there you go. How wonderful. <laughs> oh, Suzanne, and there's this one. I this one, I don't know. This is so good. That Calvin Klein bottle green. Mm. And it's got these the kind of beautiful big raglan sleeve. Mm. It's really nice. I'll bring this up, Evelyn. You'll have to have a look. Because you'll love the colour. You might not love the shape, but we'll see. You, we might be surprised. Yes, as well, Yahab is a designer in his own right. You are certainly my um, biggest enthusiastic <laughs> uh, supporter of my work. Absolutely, the the that beautiful um, cape, you know, the the reversible grey and and blue wool with the and then you can wrap it around the neck. Around the neck when you pull it in. Remember, oh, I've got to I've got to share this. I bought this great big snake remember the, the, the holston holston snake that's right the python with the silk line or the wool lining yeah linda holston's uh, yeah. great big python snake the skin and it's got the wool lining on the other side and you just wrap it around your neck and it's just amazing <laughs> should have bought it that was, that was <laughs> um you see there's there's a history of that there's a history of all these pieces with you i love it i've really enjoyed this i mean people are welcome to i guess uh, watch and then what email more questions if they have um because just for those um of you that are in sydney i am coming next week now it's the first time in a year obviously the borders we're still waiting for them to open but they did say the 23rd um so I would love to see you at the Waterloo Salon that you are generally all familiar with. Um, come for drinks. The selection will be smaller because I'm actually driving up for the first time in eight years. It's me and the, the car and, you know, 200 pieces of clothing. Oh, before you go, I'll just, I'll give you another little tour. Excuse the mess. This is my little flower station with the hand sanitizer. And that's definitely, you don't need to see that. That's things I need to tidy up. And then this is the collection of lookbooks. Uh, it, it never ends. Thank you so much. I learned a lot. You have a passion for fashion and the history <laughs> of it, which I I'm really, glad. really respect. Yeah. I'm glad. And I see you've got the fashion book behind you as well. Yes, I have a few. Thank you so much. It's just been so fantastic. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Yaha. Absolutely. Thank you all for, for attending and watching. And it's been a pleasure. Yes.